Good evening, everybody. My name is Esther Jacobs, and they call me the no excuses lady because I say there's never an excuse to do what you really want to do. And some of the previous speakers tonight showed us that indeed, no matter what your limitations are, you can always achieve your goals and your dreams. Um, most people think you need money to achieve your goals. Well, I raised $25 million for charity without any experience and with a budget of zero. So hang on, I'll try to share with you my seven years of experience of this project in 10 minutes. And I'll try to share the lessons that I learned because you don't always need money to do what you really want to do. But before I go to my Corns for Care project, I'd like to take you back to when I was 16 years old. I had a very important conversation, I know now, but back then it was just something weird because my neighbor was a psychic lady. So she could look into the future, she could heal people, and she always had these weird things. She knew your secrets. And uh, one day she sat me down and she told me, Esther, do you know that the earth as we know it is going to end someday? There's going to be a big disaster. I don't know if it's going to be in a few months or in a few years, but someday everything we know stops to exist. And she told me, don't worry. Don't worry about that, just live your life, but keep in your mind that if you want to do something, don't postpone it. Don't put it on the long term, do it as soon as you can. And I didn't really believe the apocalypse story, but somehow I remembered her advice, and I didn't go to university for like 10 years and get a job and get a career like most of my friends did. I did a very practical business study, and then I w started working freelance, and I started traveling. That's what I really wanted to do. So one day, I created my bucket list. Some people talked about it already. And um, I made a list of 10 things that I really wanted to do. I wanted to climb Machu Picchu. I wanted to swim with dolphins. Uh, I wanted to jump out of a plane with a parachute. <laughs> and I did all that. 10 of my most important things in one year, and that gave me so much energy. It was just great, it made me feel alive. So I decided to make it into my life motto. If you want something, go ahead and do it. And after all this traveling, I wanted to do something to make this world a better place. And I was very naive. I thought that I could do that by helping charities. So I went over to the charities and I said, hi, my name is Esther, I want to help you. And they weren't really interested. They said, well, you need experience to work with us. You need to be a doctor or you need to have a charity experience. And I said, well, I'll work for free. I'll take an intern job. And I said, you need two years of work experience for that. So I decided to set up my own charity. And it was a very good opportunity because the euro was being introduced. And all our German marks and French francs that we would keep after our holidays would lose their value. And I thought, if these few coins don't have any value to me, and to you, and to you, and to you, what if we collect all these coins for charity? It will be a very big amount of money, and those charities can help the poor people, the environment, make a better world for us. So I was very enthusiastic, young and naive, and I thought, to do this, I need three things. I need charities. I need retailers, like banks and stores, to put collection boxes. And of course, I need sponsors, because I didn't have any money. So I went to the charities, told them my story, and they said, who is Esther Jacobs? And who tells us that you can pull off this big project? Well, anyway, this is maybe to mask the reaction of the charities, because they said, who is Esther Jacobs? What other charities are participating? And what retailers are you going to put the collection boxes? And then they kicked me out. So I went to the retailers, same story. Who is Esther Jacobs? What charity is the money going to? And what other retailers are participating? Same thing for the sponsors. Everywhere I went, it was like a dead end road. And I get really frustrated, but I thought, okay, if they don't have confidence in me, I have to show them what I can do. I have to become an expert in something. So I went to study the processing of foreign coins for one and a half years. I talked to everybody, coin machines, transport companies, banks, and I found a solution for the processing of foreign coins. 
So I went back to the charities and the retailers and I said, hi, remember me? I found a solution for the problem. And they said, well, we weren't aware there was a problem. We just didn't have confidence in you. By then, I was two years into the project, not getting paid, not making any money, not making any progress, and I was getting really, really frustrated. And I was about to give up when something interesting happened. I got invited into a TV show. I had never been on TV, I'd never even been on the radio. And I found out that on TV you get exactly two and a half minutes to get your story across. And somehow, those two years of fruitless talking to retailers and sponsors got my elevator pitch ready. So in those two and a half minutes, I could explain Coins for Care, I knew what questions they were going to ask, I could answer them, and the TV people were so happy that they invited me into other shows. So within a few days, everybody knew about Coins for Care. And there was something else that struck me later. What was my big disadvantage in the beginning? They didn't have confidence in me. I was too young, inexperienced, the girl next door. Suddenly, was a big advantage when I was on TV. People said I was approachable, I was sympathetic. I, I looked like their girl next door. So in a different context, the same characteristic suddenly was a big advantage. And I found out that something that is your biggest weakness can be a strength in a different context. Another example, when I was working freelance as a consultant, they often found me pushy because I was coming into a company, I was working very hard, very enthusiastic, and I was going straight for the goal. And people weren't used to that. They said, oh, she's too pushy. And then, when I was working for Coins for Care, they said, oh, this girl has perseverance. <laughs> Same characteristic, different situation. So look at this list. Maybe you find something that people call you, and if you use it in a different context, it can be a big opportunity. Now, the big problem was I didn't have any money, and I had to organize a lot of things. And that's when I discovered the wonders of sponsoring. Sandra Hay also talked about this. People are so willing to help, especially when it's for charity. But I discovered something. Many people talk about sponsoring. They want money. Can I have your money, your money, your money? And then they buy things somewhere else. But I discovered you have to go straight to the source. When I needed printing materials, I would go to a printer. And for them, it didn't cost much. But I got another big challenge when I needed collection boxes, because they didn't exist. And I talked to a lot of people again, and somebody came up with the idea to make collection boxes out of sewer pipes. In Dutch, rioolbuizen. So after the sewer pipe company stopped laughing, they donated 4,000 sewer pipes, and another company made them into the collection boxes. We put a big sponsored sticker on them, and we had the collection boxes. So if you don't have money, you need to be creative. And there's many speeches and books and, and workshops about creativity. But I have this one example I'd like to experiment with you. So you'll never, ever forget what creativity is. So can you imagine the three squares are stores? Exactly the same stores in the same street selling electronics. And you are the owner of the middle store. This really happened. One day you come to work, and one of your neighbors put up a sign, the cheapest. And you're thinking, oh, I have to do something, I have to do something. And then your next, neighbor, next day your neighbor has a sign, the best. Now what are you going to do to distinguish yourself? Think out of the box. Charity. Sorry? Charity? Charity? Yeah. <laughs> Any other ideas? Sorry? The only one? The best and the cheapest, that's, that's more of the same. Now, really creative thinker is what the owner of the middle store did. <laughs> so if you don't have money, think of this, and I'm sure you'll get your project done. And another piece of advice that I discovered is everybody is willing to help. And we are not used to asking for help or to talking about our problems or our dreams. 
But if you do, you'll be surprised because everybody wants to help. When somebody tells me about their dream, I automatically start thinking, you have to read this book, talk, talk to this person, I can help you with this. It's, hum it's a human characteristic to want to help others. So from now on, never have lunch alone. Invite somebody that you've seen around and you never talked to before and talk about their passions, talk about your dreams and see what happens, you'll be surprised. The other thing is, if you're in a project like this, I had to work to make money. I was working on kind of a career as like a freelance consultant, but Coins for Care was really getting big. After the TV programs, charities started calling, retailers started calling, and it was just getting crazy. I don't know, are there any account managers here? Anybody, account manager? There's one over there. Well. You'll probably know that being an account manager is very busy. You have to keep your clients happy, answer their questions, you know, communicate with them. At one point, I woke up and I found myself the account manager of over 6,000 different organizations with questions about security, about logistics, about their own organization, about the money, you name it. And on top of that, I had to generate free publicity, I had to keep everybody motivated, and all the calamities, everything that went wrong also came to me. And it's just not humanly possible to do all this, but somehow I did. I don't remember how, but I learned a few things. One of the things I learned is you have to set priorities. Like when a journalist called me, I always had time. In the middle of the night, it didn't matter, I talked to them. And that's how I generated a lot of free publicity, and that's what brought the sponsors in, and what kept the retailers and the volunteers happy. And another thing is, even though it's good to react quickly, sometimes I had a problem, like my computer crashed. And I didn't have a technical company that you can call, I had to find a volunteer to fix it. When it was fixed after three days, I found that there were a lot of urgent emails with huge problems that needed to be solved. So I called the people, and you know what they said? Oh, that was three days ago, we solved it already. So, if there's a lot of things happening, sometimes it's good to leave them. Now, who of you has ever been in love? Don't be shy, come on. Now, what happens if you have a very busy working day, lots of obligations, and then this wonderful woman or man you just met calls and says, do you want to have a date tonight? Do you fit in the date? Of course you do, even if you have to work at night. Time is flexible. And there's a lot of difference between a stolen minute with your loved one and one minute waiting for the elevator, right? So one minute is what you make of it. And I needed this flexibility in time because I was in the charity world, the established charity world as an outsider. And I did everything different and faster and cheaper than they did. So they weren't happy with me. And I listened to a speech of George Ayeti, also a TED speaker, about Africa. And he says there's two types of people in Africa, cheetahs and hippos. The hippos are the big, fat, established people, the ruling class. They only talk to other hippos. They sit together in the mud all day, eating, getting fatter, lazy. And when they move, they move very slowly and they crush everything that gets in their way. And at the same time, in the grass, on the side, there's the cheetah, waiting, hiding. That's the entrepreneur, and they're waiting for an opportunity. And when they see one, they go for it. And they're the fastest runners in the world. 50% of the time they miss and they have to start all over again. But 50% of the time, cheetah made its, uh, its catch. So anyway, I was the cheetah in the hippo world of the charities. And I wanted to work together with them, but they were only looking for the money. And in the end, we raised about 16 million euro, 25 million dollar, never mind the exchange rate, it was a lot of money. And it still hurts me to say that half of that amount, the hippos spend on their hippo things. I arranged everything for free, websites, collection boxes, and they did everything again paid. And then the money that was left was given to 120 charities, and a large part of the money is still not accounted for. They just don't want to talk to me. 
So you can say that Corns for Care was a big success because my goal was to raise a lot of money, and I did. But the deeper goal was to make the world a better place, and I'm not sure that I achieved what I really wanted to achieve. But it's up to you to decide whether it was a failure or a success. The most important thing to me is that I learned a lot. I learned that everything is possible. That's the wrong direction. There we are. I wrote a book about my experiences. And the most important thing is, if you don't have money, be creative. It's an advantage not to have money. If you don't have time, set priorities. Use your time wisely. It's an advantage to have little time, otherwise the work spreads. If you don't have experience, be happy because you look at things from a fresh perspective. You ask the questions that nobody's asking anymore. So basically, there's never a problem. You know, you should do what you really want to do, and you should do it now. Don't wait too long. So let's look at your bucket list. I'm just going to steal another 30 seconds to help you get your dream going. What would you do if you won the lottery today? I'll give you the winning ticket. You can write down the amount. What would you do? And what if you only had a limited amount of time left? What did you enjoy doing when you were a kid? And what makes you feel really alive now as an adult? There's never an excuse to make the first step today. Don't wait for the perfect timing. That, there's, that everything is perfect, you have enough money, you have enough time, it's never going to happen. You have to make it happen, work with what you have, and start today with little steps. And external circumstances we've seen today with other speakers are not an excuse. Failure is not an excuse. And the only thing you'll ever regret is not trying. Thank you very much.